If you are working on your level one or level two Google certification, Google Groups is a tool that you may be asked to demonstrate your understanding of. This is a tool that most teachers don't interact with on a regular basis, so I wanted to put together a short video to show you what you'll need to know on the Google Educator level one and two exams in order to uh, pass and achieve these scenario skills. So first of all, just briefly, Google Groups is a service that allows um, a school district to enable large scale sharing and communication. Google Groups is really designed to be used with large groups of, of um, users, teachers, students. Um, it's not typically something that an individual teacher would set up, and something that an IT director might set up so that they could email all of the high school seniors or all of the students in a particular school building. But you will be asked potentially about this tool on the level one and two exams. Now, Eric Kurtz has put together a great skills checklist, and I've uh, just gone through there and pulled out the Google group skills. So level one, it's just a real basic um, um, task to set up a Google group. We'll look at that here in a moment. And then the level two, um, they're going to potentially ask you to not only set up a group, but to configure that group with some uh, specific uh, settings. And we'll look at those here in a short, uh, in a moment. Now, there are a couple of benefits that you get when you use Google Groups to share. So when you create a Google Group, uh, that group has a unique email address that you can use to send messages to the group, emails, discussion posts, or even to share resources like Google Docs, Google Sites, and Google Calendars. So one of the benefits is that sharing with a group is retroactive. So for example, if um, a school has a bunch of resources that all teachers need access to, if they use Google Groups to make those, access, uh, those resources accessible, if the school hires a new teacher midway through the school year, all they have to do is add that teacher into the group and they will immediately get access to all the resources that are previously shared. So it has that retroactive sharing, which is unique uh, to Google Groups. Groups do work across all of the Google ecosystem. You know, the group just has an email address, and so anywhere you can share a file or a resource, uh, you could potentially use Google Groups. The final reason that uh, schools must use Google Groups is there is actually a limit to how many individuals you can share a resource to. I forget the exact number, I think it's a couple hundred, but if you share like a Google document with more than 200 people, it stops working. And so if you have a large number of people, you really have to create a Google group because the group email address just counts as one email, even though there could be thousands of people within the group. So that's a quick overview of what groups is and why it might be necessary to use it. Now let's jump into groups and actually configure one. Now, as you're practicing this skill for your certification test, you may not be able to use your school G Suite account. Um, a lot of schools will block the ability for teachers and students to create Google Groups. You can try it, but you may have to use a personal Gmail account to access groups. Easiest way to get there is to just visit groups.google.com, and we'll click this red button to create group. We'll give the group a name. Um, I'm going to pretend that I'm creating a science um, Olympiad group so that I can communicate with my um, students on the team as well as parents. Everybody, I'll just send messages to this group. So I just give it a group name. Now, if you're creating a public group using your Gmail account, you're probably going to have a lot of issues finding a name that hasn't been taken. So you're going to have to add numbers or letters to that. But you'll notice that. Um, once you name your group, you get two things. You get an email address, and then you also get a URL. So groups can serve several different functions. They can serve as a, a listserv, and so you'll just be sending messages to that email address, or they can serve as kind of a web discussion board, in which case you just send people to the URL. I would skip the group description. Um, that's not going to be a huge deal. But this group type is an important distinction. 
Now, groups will work regardless, but on the certification exam, you should be given some instructions about what type of group they want you to create. So an email list is more gonna be for document and resource sharing and just email collaboration. And so we would just be using the email address. If you wanted to do a more like a discussion forum or even like a help ticket system, uh, we would do either a web forum or a Q and A forum and primarily rely on the URL for that group. On the level one exam, that's pretty much all you're gonna be asked to do is just create a group, give it a name, and then um, maybe configure that group type. On the level two test, they're gonna go a little bit further and uh, probably ask you to configure some of these uh, permissions for who can post and access the group. Now, in the case of a large group with thousands of members, let's use the example of a high school. So we have a group for all of the students so that staff can easily communicate to them. What you don't want happening is students abusing the access to this group and sending messages to it all the time. It would get out of control really quickly. And so what we would do is we'd come down here to basic permissions and change the posting permissions so that only managers or owners of the group are able to send messages. Everyone in the group can view them, but only a few individuals can post them. Um, same thing down here, if you wanted to keep your group private to only a select number of individuals, um, you could adjust these permission settings to set who is able to access uh, the group and request membership. Those are the primary things. I, I don't anticipate a whole lot more that you would be asked to do on the um, level one or two certification exams. Let's pull up that skills checklist uh, again for groups. Um, again, if, if you have not seen it, I would recommend that you head over to controlaltachieve.com. That's Eric Kurt's site. He has a great list of um, all the skills that you'll need to develop, not just for groups, but for everything. But here you can see uh, the skills we need for level one and level two. Hopefully this has been helpful. Leave me a comment if you have any questions about Google Groups. Good luck on your certification exam.